Hi, my name is Justine Dean. You are about to watch the online prosperity show with Prosper. Uh, we're going to be talking about neuro-linguistic programming, timeline therapy, personality types, uh, and coaching. So have a great time. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Justin. Justin, how are you doing, my love? I'm fantastic. Thank you, Prosper. Great stuff. Now, Justin is an NLP coach and practitioner and also a timeline therapy uh, practitioner. Now, what does that all mean uh, to the, f the person that's just hearing about this for the first time, Justin? Uh, NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming, so it's working with the language of the mind, uh, mostly your unconscious mind, and working with limiting beliefs, you know, what you believe about yourself, because uh, you would have heard many times before, what you believe on the inside is what you manifest on the outside, and people can quite often sabotage themselves or, or paralyze any progress in their life because of what they believe about themselves. So what we do is we dig into that and we ask a lot of questions, establish what those limiting beliefs are, and then we help our clients get rid of those beliefs for good and uh, work out a way to move forward. Okay, so what would happen if somebody decides they just wanna keep their limiting beliefs? What are they missing out on? They're missing out on freedom, um, Prosper. Uh, I'll give you an example. I have a client who was stuck in a job and I say stuck because she was miserable. She really believed her limiting belief was that all she could do was this particular type of work um, and that nobody else would have me. I can't learn anything new. These were all her stories. Um, you know, I'm not good enough. Um, you know, I'm stuck. So that's what she really believed about herself. And we got to the bottom of that. You know, there's a lot of fear around uh, employment um, and a lot of ideas about how the world really is. And, I, and what we also do when we get to the bottom of those beliefs is we, we, we get rid of them and then we form a plan to move forward. So we work out, worked out what she really wanted was to work in a vastly different field. It was just incredible. And um, because I'm on the outside, I can see, you know, when you look at someone, you can see the magic in them, even if they can't see it themselves. So um, I set her some tasks around um, applying for jobs. And uh, she was a real trooper. She, even though she was scared, she trusted me. And she, you know, sometimes you've got, really got to have someone else believe in you before you can see it yourself. So. Uh, 12 applications later, within the period of time that I set, she got an interview and was shocked because she didn't believe that anyone would want her, particularly in this new field. Anyhow, long story short, she's four months into this new career and absolutely loving it. So what she would have missed out on is um, having a meaningful, um, a meaningful day every day and a meaningful contribution feeling great about herself and doing something that she really loved. And she would have just sat in misery because she was, her job was killing her. And now this one is just bringing her to life. Right. Oh, that's a really good outcome for that lady. Good on yeah. you for, for helping her realize and achieve her dreams. But you would realize and understand that every one of us is brought up in um, an environment where you, you go to school, you then have to go to a job that, you know, you get, and if you, you, you do your best to maintain that job because jobs are hard to come by right now. So let's give your previous lady um, a name. Let's say Sally has not have had any influence towards knowing what her limiting beliefs are. How can somebody actually notice that the environment they're in is toxic and it's not helping them, um, you know, even, even if you're, you're not around to help them realize that? If I'm not around. Okay, it's really important and it works um, in employment, relationships, um, absolutely every area of your life. Pay attention to how you feel. Do you feel alive, happy, motivated, um, healthy, invigorated, or do you feel um, sad, trapped, lost, negative? Um, it's the same as when you're hanging around people in the workplace, you know, when you're, or even friends or relatives, 
pay attention to how you feel. If you're feeling bad in your job, you're feeling unfulfilled in your relationship, that's a big red flag for you to realize that something's not right. Great stuff. Because some people would just live with it and then they'll just think this is what it's meant to be. So without... Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I've, um, I've had clients say to me that like when I ask them why they don't reach out and why or why it's taken them so long to reach out or why they've allowed themselves to stay stuck in a relationship or a job that or even just in a bad health situation that makes them feel so awful and it's because they haven't learnt any different. Like Dr. Phil says, you learn what you live. So if you grow up in an environment where you accept abusive relationships or where someone in the family is an overeater or, you know, a parent feeds a child uh, to keep them happy, then, then you've learnt that food is what, you know, food is what fixes everything or you've learnt that, I've grown up in an abusive uh, family, so that's what happens and that's what I choose. So because of my limiting belief, I'm going to choose an abusive relationship. Right. So Dr. you learn what you live. Great, great stuff. And um, I think Dr. Phil was, was right in those words there, and <clears throat> it's good to hear them coming through from you. Now, you would have mentioned that people can realize and notice these things at work and you gave a, a, a complete solution about that lady who then has to go to another job and now she's fulfilled. Now, let's say yes. this, um, you know, limiting stuff is happening within the household. You can't disown family. You can't leave family and, and you know, just up and go and maybe go stay with another family just because your family is not happening. So your, what if the environment you're living in and around is toxic and it's also now affecting your work? How would you you know, um, help somebody through um, a situ situation or scenario like that? It would really depend on what they wanted and what the circumstance was. If someone was in a, an abusive marriage where their partner, um, you know, that that's something, because I can't make anybody do anything. The answers are within the client. So if someone's in a situation in their relationship where they're really unhappy, then that's a decision that they've got to make and we can work towards supporting them, making a choice based on uh, feeling better about themselves. If, it, if you live in a large family and it's, you know, everyone's a bit negative, there's certain ways that you can change your state. Um, and the, you know, some of the cool stuff you can do is, and, and you would know this yourself, um, listen to audio books, read books, hang out with different people. Um, another great way to change your state is to listen to music. I've seen you bop around your office a few times. I do it too. Like, and I have to, I bought my husband noise cancelling headphones because I bop around a little bit. Um, so it it's really does depend on your environment. If it's an abusive environment, that's where choices have got to be made. But if family members are just negative, then you've got to work on your state and be fierce about that and, and protect your state of mind. And so feed your mind with really positive stuff. There's hundreds of, um, you know, TED Talks videos that I recommend to clients. Um, as I said, audio books. Um, and connecting with different kinds of people that are more positive so that you still have that positive, healthy influence Great. around you. Great stuff. Thank you so much for that, Justine. And obviously, if you're watching this, you're watching one of um, the influences that can help you to actually um, have a life that's of a happier existence. Now, yeah. now that we're, we're sort of, you know, you know um, measured, measuring... Um, Okay, I'm going to have to cut that part. Now that we are sort of um, looking at both sides, the work and the life side of um, things, which are, you know, where we spend most of our times, how then would you um, connect both of them? Because if you're not doing well at home, um, you know, your work would flounder. And if work is not doing uh, well, your home would also suffer. And some people don't know how to create that sort of work-life balance. Is there any tips that you can... Um, put together so that you know somebody can actually understand and see that they're causing themselves harm by not making that well, distinction there. Absolutely, Prosper. Your work life is a direct reflection of what's happening at home. Um, so, uh, a good way to assess it is you know, am I happy in the workplace? Am I fulfilled? Am I doing meaningful work? Um, and if you're not, that's 
highly likely that's affecting your mood and your state. You'll hear me talk a lot about state. That will affect your state at home because you're going home feeling unfulfilled or grumpy or tired. It's, it's amazing. When you're doing work that you really love, and you would have experienced this as well, when you're doing what you love, you can lose hours. Um, I lose hours talking to people and uh, uh, helping people because that's what I really love. But when I'm in, you know, when I'm in a day, my day job, um, I can spend less hours doing that and I'm tired at the end of the day. So again, it's paying attention to how you feel. So if you're in the workplace and it's impacting you at home, that's something to be really um, finely tuned to. So you can speak to your supervisor, talk about, you know what, uh, this work isn't really meaningful. I'd like to do something else. So you can ask for um, different training, have a look at what opportunities there are within your business. Uh, and uh, because some, some people don't enjoy their, their work or they don't reach out and go for promotions because they don't feel that they're skilled up enough. So always ask for more training. See what you can do um, with regards to personal training as well. A lot of businesses do have training available. And if they don't, that's when you would approach your boss. Ask for a review. Ask for a work review. Um, get some feedback on what your um, colleagues and what your boss uh, how they think that you're going and ask, you know, what can I do to improve? What can I do to position myself better for a promotion? Um, you know, ask questions. Um, and equally at home, if you're not happy at home, I would really look at improving your state. Again, watch some great TED Talks, read some good books, um, uh, listen to, um, Look, you know, like even hypnotapes. I listen to a lot of, um, like Paul McKenna is fantastic. Everyone will have their favourites. Um, if you, you know, if you're at home and it's in affecting your work, um, have a look at your relationships at home. Are you happy in your relationship? Does that need some work? So it's really about paying attention to how you feel. That's a big, big one. And also taking 100% responsibility for it as well. Because a lot of people, um, have you, you've heard of cause and effect. So a lot of people are in effect because uh, they're, they're blaming everybody else. Um, my job was, uh, I'm stuck or I can't change my job because I don't know what to do or so-and-so is making me feel bad. So yes, you can change your job and, and uh, I, it, it's a limiting belief to think that you can't. There is always a way. Um, and at home with your relationship, you, yes, you do have 100% control of how you feel at home. Change it up. Do something different every day. Um, you know, have a look at what your daily routine is and look at changing just a couple of things and uh, do it for 49 days. I love that one. It's a tricky way of saying seven weeks. So um, I say to my clients, are you going to stick with this for 49 days? So after the seven weeks, generally a habit has been changed. So look at your habits. Replace um, a bad habit with a good one. If you come home and you flop down on the couch and do nothing, well, instead go, right, what else could I do? I could come home and grab the dog and go for a walk just for 20 minutes. And it just breaks your, it breaks your state and it changes how you feel about yourself. And even do that when you feel like least feel like it is when you'll get the most out of it. Great stuff. Okay. So you did mention a lot of nuggets there, but the one that resonated with me is more to do with um, a pattern break, you know, changing the way yeah. things and routine and the way things are supposed to be. But as you know, humans are creatures of habit. If I'm going to yeah. do things that, you know, are out of my daily routine, First of all, maybe I'm not going to like it. And second of all, I'm not going to want to do it. And third of all, thank you for letting us know that it takes seven weeks of which I don't have that time. Now, <laughs> how can you get somebody to actually, you know, once you start working with them to follow through with, with all of that? Because once they start something, the momentum would probably lose if they're not seeing instant results. It's really interesting. A lot of it is a very instant society, and that's a great point, Prosper. Um, I think it depends on how bad they want it. I know I just sort of gave a lot of pearls straight away. When people, by the time people come to me, they really are fed up with where they're at, and they don't want to be there anymore, and they need help. Um, 
And I think, you know, once we work through what they really want their life to look like, then we do the old reverse engineer and work out what do I have to do to get where I need to go. And um, my clients don't lose momentum because they choose the tasks that they do. Um, they look at the end state that they want to achieve. And, you know, because we've worked out a plan on how to get there, it's not, it's not huge changes all at once. I recommend particular books particular audio books um, and it depends on you know what they want to do the other thing that really keeps momentum going is that I have um, programs where I'm available face to face or via Skype like this um, to my clients once a week for an hour and I also have email and messenger support and you know I use Facebook and Instagram they're my main two channels so you've got a cheerleader who is always there to say, hey, how'd you go? And I get my clients to report in every single day. What did you eat? How was your sleep? Um, and it's really short bullet point. What did you eat? How did you sleep? What did you do differently today? Um, what are you reading? Where are you up to? Um, and that way, um, you know, how like, yes, we do need someone to hold our hand prosper. Um, like you said, at school, we're not taught how to motivate ourselves, really. We're, schools are a sausage factory. We get spat in and you're screwed if you're a T-bone steak because you've just got to, you've got to conform. So um, I get so excited when I talk about this because watching people come alive, watching people say, oh, my God, I can do this. And it's really interesting. When you have a cheerleader and a gatekeeper, that's what my clients call me is there I'm their cheerleader but I'm also the gatekeeper so they've got somebody that they're accountable to finally and it's not so much as a disciplinarian and it's not um it's not in a form where you're scolding them or anything it's you're encouraging them hey how'd you go you you would be amazed um also with that 49 day thing I just do up a grid with 49 squares in it and just say, what's one habit you're going to change over the next 49 days? So they write it up the top and they just put a great big coloured, you know, squiggle in it if they, if they do it. And if they don't do it, they put a cross. Psychologically, if you see two crosses there, there's no way you want it to happen a third day in a row. So, um, you know, with encouragement from a coach and uh, the knowledge and also the support, because they're changing their state. They're listening to music. they got positive audio books. Um, and people thrive on that. I think they just don't know what to do to change what's going on for them. So when we work through that and we put a plan in place, we have regular contact, it makes a massive difference um, to their commitment because they see the instant result of feeling better every day. Great stuff. Wow. Because <clears throat> obviously these days, um, I was talking to um, one of my other um, coach, coach friends who is a client and we were yeah. talking about how the world we live in now is like an episode, a full episode of Seinfeld or a full episode of Fresh Prince of Ballet. That's off on a taxi ride and then from there, um, Uncle Phil is ready for him. Everything happens in a matter of an episode, all right? Yeah. So that's what people are now anticipating life to be like, you know? In a matter of it has to happen in the next 30 minutes. And now I see where you're coming from with this, that there's, there's, there's a whole greed that they can utilize. There's a whole strategy behind it, which makes it a yeah. whole lot better. Now, do people have to understand their own uh, personality in order to understand how they are receptive to these, um, you know, these commands that you're giving them? Or is there something else that they just need to do or just accept the way they are? Uh, I think there's, there's two things inside of this and you'll have to help me remember. Firstly, I want to talk about how automated we are. And this right. is why people come alive when they do coaching. Because like Dr. Phil says, you learn what you live. So you learn to go to school, go to uni, get a job, then you're home to work, work to home, have kids, kids go to sport. Like it's all, it's all automatic. So um, it's fascinating walking into businesses and seeing people who have been there for 10, 20, 30 years or even just a few months and they're already automated. So it's like Groundhog Day. So that's why people come alive. Um, what, was the, what was the last part of the question? The other part is, do they have to find out anything about their personality so that oh, they... their personalities, yeah, yeah. Um, one other thing that I do that is hugely successful is that I go into businesses and run a two-hour workshop 
and we identify and it's it's general and it's fairly simplified and everybody gets it and they have a ball with it so we generally we work out what your personality type is so that you understand yourself so that you uh, some of the biggest comments I get from people is they're they're um, joyful because they're like oh my god is that why I behave like that or and and then uh, so there's you know the four different personality types basically and look there's hundreds of different um, you know ways that you can figure out personalities I use a very simplified one and uh, so the first thing they do is go oh god is that what I'm like oh that's exactly what I'm like and then then they're like oh hang on my dad's like that or my boss is like that so they they just awaken to realizing um, why they behave the way they do and why others behave the way they do and that it's okay to be either you know because any of the four um, so it makes people feel good about themselves I've had people say to me you know what I've been made wrong for years for being like this you know I'm really detailed and I need to know all the information about stuff and people get mad at me for that but now I understand that that's my type so there's huge value in finding out what your personality type is absolutely huge and it helps you with your connection and communication with other people as well whether that's in the workplace or in your family or with your friends great stuff so obviously that offers some sort of a pattern break um, from what was yes. normal for you before and how does that then build that person who was having so many limited beliefs or probably was plugging themselves into a team that didn't fit or plugging themselves into relationships that did not actually fit. Once you've taken them on to this whole 360 that we've just done, now they know their personality types. How do they then function? And you know, what's, what's the aha moment for them that they normally then get? The aha moment is at the point where they read their personality profile and say, this is me and this is what, and do you know what? It gives them so much freedom, Prosper, when somebody, when they just read, because at the end there's a list of positive traits for that personality and negative traits. Now, they're very general. So it's so funny watching people read their positive traits and they're like, they're laughing their heads off and going, oh, my God, that's just so me. And then they read the negative traits and go, oh. Oh, that's not me. But generally, within a few minutes, they're like, oh, that is so me. Um, so that's the aha moment there. The instant they they realise that that's who they are and it's okay and that they're okay. Um, and then the next step is realising, you can see people, they, they have light bulb moments. They're like, when, when they're saying, oh, is that why I clash with my partner? Do you know, I did a workshop, um, there was 120 people in this business and um, I went in and I'm a little bit, a little bit of a loose cannon I get in and have a lot of fun and jump around and people tend to even the most you know jaded stoic employee will end up having a bit of fun and um, I had a guy approach me about four months after this workshop and it was a fun workshop and and he was quiet at the time and but did come up and thank me and about four months later he contacted me and asked to meet with me and when he met with me he said I finally had the courage last night to ask my wife to do this because I give everyone a copy of it and um, I said why do you say courage and he said well um, when we did the personality workshop I realized why my wife and I have a lot of arguments and why we irritate each other but I was too scared to approach her about it and um, he remembered that I had said don't go home bouncing out of your skin and tell it tell your partner that they have to do it so he was just beautiful prosper and he said to me we did the exercise i waited for her to be open and he said you know we we sat up and talked for three hours he said it was the most profound experience in my marriage wow. she finally understood me and and i realized you know and we were able to talk and talk and talk and sort of unpack a few painful moments that they would had together over time and he said and I've got goosebumps now, honestly, Prosper, it was just beautiful. So there's, there's so many components to this where um, you can really open up and have um, just a much more freedom in your relationships. And I've had, um, I went into a hair salon, there was a lady who had um, 15 staff, all women, can you imagine? So, yeah. so there was a, a little bit of discontent. So I went in and did the workshop with them and um, there was, 
a couple of girls looking at another girl in the business and she was getting a bit teary and these these two women said oh my god we have been treating this this particular girl with um a little bit of impatience quite quite a bit of impatience and they apologized to her in front of everyone and said you know we're so sorry we understand now why you are the way you are and why we're likely to be impatient with you and we're so sorry so it was a beautiful moment there you know in front of everyone it was very humbling um and it's such a privilege to be part of that just for people understanding each other yeah. so i've heard wonderful reports about that business they were actually doing the personality profile with clients after that you know oh my god you got to try this so it's just lifted the morale in the business great stuff yeah because once yeah. people are working together the team dynamics are in place productivity happens work happens and there's yeah. cooperation you know what i mean and once people are yeah. cooperating clients are happy business works out perfectly now that's how can exactly we actually right. hire you to come and fix things here at live long digital <laughs> no problem at all you know we you know now so at the moment i'm um, i'm based in melbourne um and you know, I do a lot of my consulting via Skype, but I really love seeing people face to face and particularly del delivering the workshops and doing um, coaching in businesses. I do love to go to the businesses. So um, a couple of people that I work for just fly me to wherever they are. But um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Now, I'm only very new to the digital marketing side of things. I've probably been active on Instagram maybe for a few months and Facebook forever, but I do a live most nights and so I'm available, you know, to contact through those two methods. Understandable. So obviously you might be going through a lot of limiting beliefs and you might not quite sure if the, 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 the outside causes are causing it or what's happening internally. So there you are, you might be in a position where you're not quite understanding yourself and you are just thinking that um, it's the people that are around you or the workplace that you might be in. You might just want to consult um, people like Justin and find out how you two can actually start having a happier existence, you know, just by finding out your personality type and exactly what your limiting beliefs are. Now, Justin, thank you so much for your time today. Just amazing. Thank you so much, Prosper. It's been great chatting to you. I've absolutely loved it. It's good fun. Really good fun great stuff okay now if you haven't subscribed to this channel be sure to subscribe and also i'm going to be putting all the uh, contact information for justin so that you can get a hold of her um in the show notes below now in the meantime enjoy the rest of your day and thank you so much for tuning in You need to be seeing exactly. people like um, Justin that can help you figure out whether your personality, personal, what? I can't talk. <laughs> you are so, you're tired. I think you've had a massive day, my friend. I, I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I've had a big day. Come on. <laughs> mm. Oh, you know, you know when you when you've worked so hard, you feel like you've changed part of your DNA. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I love it! I love it. You crack me up. This has been the highlight of my day, Prosper. This is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah. It's all good. It's all good. It's a good thing I didn't work. Um, you know, in the olden days when things, I, <clears throat> you know, there was not that much technology. I don't think I would have. I would have survived. <laughs> I couldn't, couldn't have been a hunter to hunt for my food. Or you know. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. Uh, all right. Okay. Let me try that again. <clears throat> all right.